ओम शांति अब एक नीवी ब्रह्मा कुमारी इसमें आज फिर आप सबका बहुत बहुत स्वागत बहुत बार आपके मन में ये सवाल आता है जब भी कार्यक्रम देख रहे होते हैं कि जितने भी हमारे साथ गेस्ट होते हैं वो इतने सीरीन कैसे लगते हैं इतने शांत कैसे लगते हैं और ऐसा कैसा ज्ञान है जो उनके पास है तो बार बार बात यही कही जाती है कि जो भी ज्ञान हम इस सीरीज में ले रहे हैं पूरी जो बातचीत है वो परमपिता परमात्मा द्वारा दी गई है स्वयं उन्होंने दी है और उस ज्ञान पर हर मनुष्य आत्मा का अधिकार है तो यही वजह है कि ये कार्यक्रम रोज़ आपके साथ होता है इन दिनों हम बात कर रहे थे रिश्तों की और एक बहुत खूबसूरत आस्पेक्ट समझ में आया था कि वो प्यार जो हम किसी अपने के साथ महसूस करते हैं उस प्यार को हम जीवन भर या कहीं तो जन्मों तक महसूस कर सकते हैं पर उसके लिए सबसे पहले ज़रूरी है कि हम खुद से प्यार करना सीखें खुद की रिस्पेक्ट करना सीखें जब अपने साथ प्यार और रिस्पेक्ट का रिश्ता बन जाएगा अपने को पहचानने का रिश्ता बनेगा तब हर रिश्ते में वो वर्च्यूज वो रिस्पेक्ट आनी शुरू हो जाएगी और हमारा सौभाग्य हमारे साथ आज फिर इस पूरी बातचीत को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए इट्स अ ग्रेट प्रिवलेज हमारे साथ खास वॉशिंगटन डी से हैं सिस्टर जैना उनका बहुत बहुत स्वागत करते हैं ओम शांति ओम शांति How are you feeling, Sister Jenna? Great. <laughs> and how do you feel about awakening with Brahma Kumari? Is it the series, and how is it people responding? It's been great, actually. We've had a uh, quite a very positive response in Washington, Virginia, and DC, which is where I am. And um, quite a number of people have come directly to the center, and them coming to the center made it real to them. So now they're into their advanced stages. They're coming regularly. They're doing seva for humanity already, and lots of transformation. It's a story of two young men who came, and if we had had a camera to take their faces before and after, and after we could have sold it for millions. <laughs> I think I am a proof of that. You're a proof of that. <laughs> no, it's true. Something happens when that awakening happens in yes. the atma, right. and the whole face changes. The light comes back to the soul. You know, mm. to the whole face, the light. shines very true actually yeah. a lot of people are experiencing that mm. and uh, like now we are in the process of understanding things uh, jena when will again be starting with again we talking about relationship and there's a very important aspect of relationship which we need to talk but before that we begin the journey and it's always good to settle our minds a lot of viewers waiting uh, yes. you know watching this program so can we start with little bit of meditation meditation mm-hmm. yes All right. So, I like everyone to just sit comfortably where they are. And um just take a minute or two. Breathe in deeply, inhale and exhale. And just for a little while. Begin to remember that you the soul am original eternal imperishable and peace you must be remembering this say inside of your mind i the soul am original eternal imperishable that i am peace and as you slowly open your eyes allow yourself to be prepared for more jewels of knowledge to be the means of awakening the soul completely so that light and light becomes your blessing not only to yourself but to all of humanity om shanti Om Shanti. Om Shanti. It's a good way, actually, to begin not only any program or कुछ भी शुरू करने से पहले अगर हम इस तरह से दो मिनट एक मिनट अपने साथ बैठते हैं एंड हमारे को सही पहचान अपनी हो जाती है नाउ वी कैन बिगिन द जर्नी गिन वंस वी हैव री एट्रेटेड हु एम आई विट आर माई इटर्नल क्वालिटीज एंड हाउ आई कैन एक्चुअली यू नो फील दैट आस्पेक्ट ऑफ माई Yes, it's important. Believe it or not, I attend a lot of meetings in Washington from very high levels to whatever. But I always initiate 1 2 3 minutes of meditation before these meetings. And in these meetings there are amazing individuals there. And after the 2 or 3 mi- 3 minutes of meditation, 
everyone's mind is so open mm -hmm. to be really constructive mm -hmm. and to be really um, peaceful in the meeting so that it works in its best way possible. And ready to grasp, you know. It can be we, anywhere you Yes, are. you know, we're not ready to actually fight out yeah. or, you know, talk yes. about or giving yes. our views. Very true. Even now, like, I'm just feeling with you just yes. such a shift. Yes. Just because we're coming from that original place yes. of the self. Very true. Yeah. So, uh, gentlemen, uh, let's go back to our relationships. <laughs> yeah, we've been we, talking a lot about that in this series. Yeah, you know, and uh, what we realized is that relationship with myself becomes very important, very, very important. In fact, yeah. the crux of it, and then, of course, relationship with God, yeah. taking Him along with us at every step. Yes. There comes a time in uh, relationships Mm. Maybe with a spouse, maybe with, uh, you know, uh, with anyone. when uh, one of us needs to go, mm. maybe the child needs to go to the hostel, the child needs to go to the U.S. for studying higher mm. studies or for a job. Maybe the spouse needs to go and work somewhere else. Mm. Or maybe the spouse and you cannot be together, so there is a separation. Mm. Or maybe ultimately death mm. takes away. Yeah. The most difficult thing in today's scenario is the acceptance mm. of separation, mm. you know, in the relationship. One, we are constantly fighting. When mm. the separation, when there's a, you know, fear of separation, we say, even if we continuously fight, doesn't matter, we are together at least, you know. There is this togetherness. I can't let you go and that nothing can happen to you. So the fear of separation in the relationship, mm. the one which makes me so possessive, Mm. So, you know, how to actually combat that and acceptance of inevitable separation. Mm. I'm going to take another twist on that word of separation. Sometimes if I go deeper into it on a spiritual context, I actually never get separated from you. But my relationship with you over a period of time has developed into a lot of dependency and attachment. And what happens when you leave or I leave is not that I'm separated from you, but that attachment and, the, and dependency is not being fed inside of me anymore. I have to understand. What do, you, actually... do you understand that? So your separation is not necessarily a physical one. It is actually in many ways a gift where an individual or a thing that is sustaining an illusion in you Somehow destiny or drama brings it to you and it says it's time for you to work on your own powers or your own abilities or, or, or your own power of love. And if physically someone leaves, it's not that physically the person has left you, but your attachment and your dependency is no longer being sustained by that person. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying in that. Attachments in these feelings are within. They're inside. The only thing that we're learning in spirituality is not necessarily a letting go of a person, but it's a letting go of the emotions of attachment that we're mm. letting go of. We're renouncing our past, and we're renouncing our old sanskaras, which are these impressions of old karmas. But you will never leave me because this globe is way too small now for me to feel I'll never see you again. Somewhere along the path, we're going to meet again. If it's not in this birth, I will see you again. Mm. And this is where it's so important, as we've been talking throughout this series, to sustain these relationships. Virtues, love and respect are the vital ingredients. Vital. But they only become vital if I've been able to put that work on myself as well. You see, it's crucial. Now, when it comes to the separation of someone by death, I think in one of our last conversations, yes, we did I've been invited to a lot of people who've been leaving the body, the soul is leaving the body. And two of the things that they say continuously, again and again and again, I wish I'd loved some more. Mm. Or, why is it so hard to let go and go back to God? Huh? And so, very practical reason is, whilst we've been living here on earth, and we will continue to live here on earth, We've developed so much love and attraction and attachment to the creation. Now, God, the Supreme Soul, the creator of all creation, is waiting, beckoning us, asking us to just remember me a little bit more during your day. Because nobody knows when it's going to be their last second. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Absolutely nobody knows. 
And so when I'm there in my bed lying and knowing this body will no longer be able to take me to the same destination that I'm accustomed to being taken, all that's left is atma and sanskaras. Then all I begin to think about is how did I treat you? Mm. How should I have treated you? Or I shouldn't have done that. So there are many relationships that need to be resolved. And I ask everyone in the audience today, no matter where you are, what you are, some point in time during this series, pick up the phone and sort out your relationships mm. with everyone. Because a time will come where we don't know when we're lying there and we won't have a chance to release the conscience mm. from that subtle burden of that very, relationship. Very true, actually. This is what we need to know. This is what we need to understand. Yeah. That, uh, you know, we keep on waiting. We keep, keep on waiting for the other person to say things. Yeah. You know? No, don't. And we don't. never take the initiative. And we don't. never know which is going to be our last moment here. Yeah. So, in fact, much better to start a relationship with God right now. Yeah. You know, it's actually beneficial. It is. You know, because you are stronger. And the last moment can be any moment. So mm -hmm. at least you understood. Yeah. And it's okay. And the moment the relationship with God becomes stronger, Janabhan, other relationships become beautiful. Yes. But they're not, you know, dependent on them. You're not dependent on them. And what I mean by, you know, in a sense to pick up the phone and call the people that you're having an issue with. Firstly, recognize your problem or your issue with somebody only happen because of some weakness. Weakness means, or limitation is, um, the way that I see you is a little different. And my thoughts and my feelings get mixed. There's some limitation inside of me, and I impose that limitation on you. It creates an obstacle or a conflict, and I can go on for years reliving that experience with you not realizing that for years I could have been having a wonderful experience mm, with you. Very true. Because one thought got stuck in me. Oh, you got to be like this it or gets something. Ruined. And then you, we continue. So we need to check actually what is the problem in our relationship. And we always talk about that he doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. Yeah. She'll never change. She'll always be like this. You know, right. She doesn't know how to behave or he doesn't know how to actually handle <laughs> You know, a lot of things in life. Right. He doesn't know how to take stress. Right. He gives me so much of stress. Yeah. <laughs> Long list, right? <laughs> but really what it is, it's that it might be even the fact that the person is like that. But at the end of it all, I am responsible for my responses and my reactions. Baba has taught us this constantly, all the time. I have to go back inside. I'm the one that has to change. I'm the one that has to respond better. A few months ago or last year, I kept telling everyone in the family, I can't believe it took me so long to enjoy life. Mm, yes, we don't enjoy life. Because what I was realizing that if I don't put a little extra of care, virtues, time, freedom in a relationship, what I call respected space, then I'll never be able to enjoy my relationship with you. And you find that if you train your eyes, if you train your being to look at the good, no matter if it's just one, something good will come out of that for you. Mm. And that relationship could change to be 100% a good one for you. But your effort is to do just one thing. Try to see something good. Try to work with that person from that place of goodness. Because you know at the end of it all, it leaves a mark in you. And if I'm on my deathbed, I know in all my heart, I did my best to make things work. Mm. The rest was really up to you. There was nothing I can do in that relationship. If I'm holding some feelings inside for you, and I keep spinning, oh, this one's like that. Oh, she's like that. She's always like that. That hurts my mouth. Yeah. My love gets reduced. And who's the one that suffers the most, you or me? Me. You know, I suffer the most. So why do you want to do that to yes, yourself? You know, we need to understand when we talk, when we think bad about our loved one, mm -hmm. when we think that he's not doing it, it's basically we are depleting ourselves. Yes. Somewhere we don't even understand. Another thing which is there, Jenna, is like in a relationship or in any, um, you know, uh, conversation with people or meeting people, 
there are people who say we cannot i cannot tolerate stupid people yes. <laughs> my intellect is higher and like you know my wife is stupid so she doesn't understand mm. my uh, kind of you know yeah. uh, working side my son doesn't understand mm. he's not intelligent enough yeah. or my you know subordinate is not mm. intelligent enough and i just cannot tolerate stupid people mm. that's what i want to know you know yeah. uh, and they are just they feel that they are justified because i'm not going to accept this kind of nonsense yeah, but that's ego no that's what it is but we never understand you know yeah and the thing is the ego is actually what's given the soul the pain to not be able to be loving enough to accept another creation from I mean, god yeah acceptance you know is such a um, big a word. scarcity now but it's a big word and yeah. so important we don't use it enough on ourselves yeah. we don't use it on each other we don't use it in the environment we don't use it we appreciate someone who does something for us but just stop for a minute look at the people in your house with you now look into their eyes look at their dreams look at their courage look at their victories if you're living by yourself take a minute and look inside is there something that you can appreciate about yourself from that place of appreciation can you bring that to somebody else that you come into connection with mm. many times you meet somebody it is a soul that you are meeting and when you see that soul your purest feeling for that soul is i know that soul is on its journey i know that's an actor playing its own part and i know what it takes to live life it's not always an easy road no, that's what i wanted to say in fact you know i've been talking about it when we are in conversation with ourselves uh, we still accepting that okay i'm a soul you know but the moment there is another being yeah you know in in my relationship there is another person see i have you yeah. and i keep on talking to you or i keep on being in vyavar with you yeah i don't remember it yeah. It, no matter how hard i try yeah it's not happening and this is what is happening with a lot of people you know that the moment they are with themselves they are in yoga they are in yoga with parmatma they are understanding their own selves it's okay yeah i am a soul fine mm. but the moment i am with my relations you know mm. i am with other human beings it the thought just moves off you know no but that's when you must bring that relationship with those other relationships because atma which is inside the body you know here of course paramatma which is a higher level of consciousness which we are merging into the body we're bringing the energy of god in the body then that should come out through our relationships with others mm. what happens is when we are with relationships with others we automatically go back into the body consciousness yes you know we forget that we are also souls it has to break because you see as we're traveling on the journey and we're all on a journey every one of us are traveling on a journey and whether you like it or not you're going to travel yeah there's no the other option yeah there's no other way to go and so sometimes i think if these are my final moments then how should i treat you how should i treat the man next door i'll tell you a story uh we were having a big dinner for women from the middle east and i had to go and get some items as gifts so i went to the mall there was a lady standing at the corner she was elderly but she seemed that she was homeless So she asked me, "Miss, please, could I have some money? I'm hungry." I says, "No, I can't give you money because karma is if I give you money, I don't know how you're using that money and that money goes back into my karma." But I said, "I'd be happy to buy you something to eat, so come." We went into the restaurant. I bought her some vegetarian pizza. I sat her down. I asked her, "What is your name? Where are you from? Why are you here? Why are you in this condition? Where are your children?" I think she had some alzheimers or something and must have been lost but that's fine I sat with her and I went through all of this about her story this woman had no one even though she had children I said but why aren't your children taking care of you they're grown up and they're on their own so I gave her the introduction of Shiva Baba I told her you're a soul I'm a soul and I'm talking to you the soul god is your child god is your beloved god is your father god is your teacher Here is a number of a homeless shelter. It's a friend of mine. Give them a call. Tell them you met Sister Jenna. And I left. Now, what did that soul do in her karma? That she's seventy or eighty years old with nobody. Mm. Why does she have nobody? There's six point five billion souls in the world, and not one person to love her. What was her karma? 
but then again this is where you know we meet so many people like this and then it's not you see you felt pain for that soul no i felt compassion, compassion. it was my duty and yes. my service to no, serve but her. you know for themselves see if these kind of things happen to us uh -huh. if, if this happens to me i'm going to say what have i done what is my karma that this is happening to me somewhere i am not still ready to take the onus on myself that this is my doing but this is where i think the programs like awakening with the brahma kumaris is actually offering us all the answers it's offering us the solutions the next step is i have to take those yes. solutions and begin to practice them very true it's not enough to just sit and listen and say oh this sounds sweet i can't wait to listen tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow but after the program is over talk with your family mm. members about it call your friend about it write a journal about what it meant to you then the next day go and practice it to mm. see how it can work because do you think i want to end up like that lady mm. 70 80 years old on her own begging for food mm. what would be my karma so relationships have a lot to do with the way that i end up living my mm. life and the way that i even exit my life the way that i exit my life I was at another person's deathbed. He had a hundred people around him, so much love. I go, what was his karma? He gave a lot of love. Mm -hmm. Even his enemies, he would bow to them and say, it's okay, I was wrong. And I learned that, that even if I'm not necessarily wrong, I will still go and say sorry because I know you're sensitive. Mm -hmm. And if I don't say sorry, you're going to hold it against me. Yeah, and you are hurt. So it's my duty mm -hmm. to make you comfortable, you know, because right. it doesn't matter to me. I have understood. And it's important, it's very, very important for us to realize the consequence or the power of good relationships. If I feel that relationships are very important and that they work, that I have to make them work, then I'll put the necessary quality thinking words and actions in this relationship to make them work because this could be my last moment with mm. you and it should be that i come out with dignity the way that i came in with dignity so tonight i ask everyone in the audience no matter who that person is they don't have to respond to you they don't have to respond to you but when you resolve this issue with them from your heart as a soul you write your email you call them on the phone and you say, whatever has happened between the two of us, I ask you for your forgiveness. I've matured. I've learned. I'm a different person. And I hope all will be well. Life is too short. Mm -hmm. And as you're telling them, you're remembering Shibaba, the ocean of love and the one who is unlimited in bestowing and giving love and peace. Your heart is going to feel so clean, so liberated that you feel like a burden of 20 years is off of your head. Mm. Very true, actually. And we don't let go. We keep on we holding to. on. So today is a day when we've always let been go. talking about. Today is a day of letting go. Yeah. Let go, let go. They say <laughs> let go and let, let God. Let be and let go. These yeah. are the things which we have been talking about. And yes, time now to experience them. You know. Yeah. Let's try to get the power. You know, we always say power of forgiveness, power of love. Yeah. Let's feel that. You know? Yeah power of togetherness yeah you know that feeling of being together and we've always learned that if we are together we are more powerful oh. and look at the relationship where they're going you know because we're all going in all these different we're directions we're looking at it know. now yeah very true uh, sister jena you've really inspired you know this whole passion of understanding you know not only my own self but the other person and one thing which you said is very very good is that even if i know i was not wrong but I understand that that person has been hurt. This it doesn't really matter. Just go to him and tell him that okay, I'm sorry. Yes. Even if um, you goes know, goes a long yeah, way. Yeah. Because yeah. even if I know I wasn't wrong, it's okay, because it'll come back to me. You yes. Know, the amount of love we'll continue to give will definitely come back. And today, yes. I think this conversation was very good. Today, whatever we talked actually makes us realize that letting go is one way of unburdening ourselves. You know? Yeah, and uh, we can continue to have the love we feel for our loved ones, you know, for a long time. I think forever, yeah. if we let go of these feelings, feelings. You know, yes, yeah. the feelings which we keep on holding back, and then we keep on, you know, making a lot of assumptions on that. Yeah. 
Sajana today's talk was actually quite good and the kind of, you know, when we took went through this meditation process also. Uh, it's not just uh, the whole ambience, it's not just the experience which we have, but it's how we feel afterwards, you know, how we feel empowered that yes, it is possible, we can do it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> Thank Amshanti. you. Thank you, Om Shanti. अब एक नहीं ब्रह्मा कुमारी इसका ये सफर आगे भी चलता रहेगा जैना बहन इन दिनों हमारे साथ है तो आगे कुछ कड़ियों में हम उनसे बात भी करेंगे और आगे आपको बता दें कि हम ये भी कोशिश कर रहे हैं जैसे हमने ये समझा है कि ना सिर्फ ज्ञान बल्कि योग भी उतना ही महत्वपूर्ण है तो हर सिचुएशन में जो बातें हमें याद रखनी है वो तो हैं ही जो ज्ञान हमें याद रखना है पर योग भी किस तरह से करना है इस पर हम ज़रूर चर्चा करेंगे अभी आपसे विदा लेते हैं शांति